Hello everybody and welcome back and in this tutorial we will cover the email harvesting tool which is called basically the harvester. So in the last tutorial I checked out if the, if we have it installed already and we do so we'll just locate it and we will run it because I already tried to run it from here harvester and it just doesn't work so let's just locate it first and we can see that it is stored in this directory user share goes mirror tool so we will just go to that directory and we can see here a bunch of programs well not a bunch of a few programs and we will change our directory to the harvester so if we type here change directory harvester we can see that right here we have an executable file Python file which we will run in order to run this program. Now let me just enlarge this program and I just want to tell you that this program basically doesn't work from time to time. So for example once I run it it might print out print us the emails and it might not because I run this a bunch of times on the same website and it sometimes just finds a lot of things and sometimes it just doesn't find anything. So if we just run this program it will show us an error and it will say the domain search is mandatory so we basically need to specify our domain website so let me just type here the help option which is the harvester dash help and it will show us our available options here we can see that the minus d is basically specifying the domain domain or company name to search for the minus b is engine so it will basically search the search engine so it will by default be google as it says right here and we want to leave it on that since i believe google is the best and here we can have the minus l which is also an important option which stands for limit it will limit the number of results to work with so basically if you just type here the 200 it will print it will search for the first 200 results and it will show us the emails and hosts from those 200. Now we can try these examples right here so we will just copy the first one let's just use minus d microsoft dot com minus l for the results number which we will set to 500 and minus d in order for it to be google. So let's just try this it will take a few seconds, it might find something and it might not. Basically if it doesn't find anything you can try using the same command later on and it will probably work. It just decides from time to time when it will find and when it will not. So if it doesn't work we won't really care much about it, we will just continue on with the tutorials and you can try it later out with the same command. So here we go, it is soon going to finish it, but in this case we just weren't able to find anything. So let me just try here the another website, or basically what if we just type Microsoft without .com. Maybe, maybe it will search it as a company name and it might find some of the results. We'll give it one more try after it if it doesn't find anything here. And we will finish the tutorial there since there is no point. As I said, sometimes this tool finds something and sometimes it just doesn't want to find anything. So we will wait for this to finish. First 200 results are already over. No, this one didn't work as well. So let me just try, try out one website that worked 20 minutes ago when I tried it. This is a website from my country, basically some university website, it doesn't even matter, you can try this on any website you want. Maybe if we use the other website, maybe it will print us something. If it doesn't, we will just proceed to the next tutorial, which will be Shodden. It is basically a search engine, basically a website that we use to search for the vulnerable devices. Now you will be surprised to how many vulnerable devices are there out on the internet. The most common vulnerable devices are basically the routers with the default username and passwords. 
and if you were to go on to the login page of that IP address, you would be able to enter their router and change all of their settings. But more about that in the next tutorial, as we can see this one didn't work either. So three times we tried and it didn't work any of those three. So basically later on or tomorrow or whenever you want, you can just try the command out once again and it will probably work. It just doesn't want to work right now. So once again, it is located in this directory. You won't be able to run it from the terminal from any di directory. If you want to, I'll show you in the next tutorials how to move a file and be able to run it from any directory with just its name. So for example, I will show you how to run this file with just its name and not going to this directory all the time when you want to use it. But we will teach that in some of the other tutorials and for now on I will cut the tutorial short here and I hope I see you in the next one.